Hi, well uh, a lot of people have been asking me um, how do I get my stuff so clean really in terms of all the bits and pieces that I've been doing and the answer is my sandblaster so um, rather than just do it I thought well I'll, what I'll do is I'll just make a quick video and show you um, my sandblaster and the, the pitfalls and the problems that I've had when I went through it um, to show you how I got around them and got it to work where I think it's great. Um, this is the sandblaster itself. Uh, you put your hands through here and then there's a door on the side which I'll show you in a moment a bit closer. And this under here, this is where the um, air compressor is. And again I'll, I'll show you the bits and pieces. Um, and it's quite noisy so when I switch it on you'll hear what it's like when it makes its noise. But again there's a problem with putting it in which I'll show you how I got round it. Um, and I've just put some bits of wood just hanging it in front of it just to protect it really because when you just take them off like so you can see the sandblaster itself just there. So this is the sandblaster. Uh, it's a Clark's one um, that I, I bought from them from Machine Mart. It's just a straightforward compressor goes round and then underneath right under here I don't know if you can see it just there that's the drain valve so I'll just I always drain it off after I finish with it so I'll just tighten it up because in a minute or two I'll be turning it on so you can hear it now the thing is the compressor itself that I'm looking at this here um, it doesn't work off a 13 amp plug. You've got to have a different electric system put in um, and it's differently fused. So here's my switch and I had to have an electrician come in and wire it up and, it, and it's on the same sort of circuit, the same sort of wiring as you can see um, that a cooker goes on and it goes through to the fuse box which is in there. I won't bore you with that but that's how it goes from there. Um, you have to just top it up with oil once a while and I've, I've just done that recently as you can see uh, before I realised I was making this video because I've spilt some on it and likewise there that's where you top the oil up and these are the air filters that it, and it sucks the air in and compresses it in and it comes out of the compressor here and it comes up and into this gadget and this gadget uh, is a pressure valve and it also uh, takes water away it's like a water trap because it pushes it in so the air is compressed pumped up into that through this and you'll, you'll see it work when we switch it on down there comes along this pipe here comes along and that pipe connects into there. Like that. So that's how that works. And then you put your hands in, you peer in there, and then uh, you'll be able to do the sandblasting. The door, the door has just got a little latch there, and you open it up. and you can see inside now one of the extra things that I've done is on this sandblasting cabinet you get an absolutely rubbish light and you can't really see what's going on so what I did again it's another alteration to the bits and pieces is I had two of these spare bedside lights these are actually from Ikea and then you can see the other ones there just inside there um, and then what I did is I wired them up so that I can turn them on and when I turn them on look at the difference you can see much clearer so I'll show you the how it is I'll move that out of the way so you can see what's what 
So I'll turn them off. So that's how you that's how much light there is coming in through the window. Not a great deal really, but when you turn the lights on, you can see a great deal more. And when you look through, you can see how much more easier it is. I'll see if I can do it with the lights on. Lights off. Lights on. So you can see that it's a lot more easier to see. Now this is a piece of plastic and they, you get replacements of these from Machine Mart and they just simply have little nuts and wheels, uh, nuts and bolts that you bolt it on. But attached underneath that, there, is a, polyster, a little polythene piece flexible thing because when the grit's blasting around um, it can, it, as you can see, it can damage that. So it's better that these are sacrificial and they only just stick on and they do it. So while I'm here, another addition that I've done is I put some stainless steel or what used to be stainless steel around the edges of the um, uh, uh, cabinet. And the reason being is um, when you've got the air blowing and circulating through, the sand or the grit tends to fall down off these and inside the hopper, which is down there. Because the grit or the sand is drawn up via this pipe here that sticks down in the hopper and into the gun. And you simply pull the trigger and it works. And the trigger is connected to the um, air through there. And you get these little pink things, these nozzles, and they come in varying sizes and you simply undo them, just like this, and you can, trying to do it one handed while well, uh, I'm doing it, I'm going to put the camera down. So they come in different sizes, when I say that I'm talking about the holes in the middle. And sometimes rubbish gets caught inside there where you think, you can't really tell, but you can see it there. And sometimes the rubbish gets caught inside there, there. And then you have to poke it out with a bit of stick and that could be anything, that could be a bit of paint, a bit of grease or um, blob of something that you've blasted off that doesn't come well and then and it stops the, the sand blasting from being very good so like I say you can just simply adjust them by getting different size nozzles and they literally just pop on like that if I can do it one-handed that goes over the top and There you go. Now you can see at the far side that there's a hole just there. And I'll show you what that hole is for now. So on mine, what I've done is um, here, I've attached a gray plastic tube and I've done it by a giant Jubilee kit and some good old duct tape that goes on, on there. And then that in its turn is attached to this. So this, you can see the grey pipe coming down there and it comes up and it's attached to this. And this is wired up separately. And what this does is, I'll turn it on, is when you switch it on, can you see it inflate? And what it does, it's sucking all the dirt, uh, all, all the air. Uh, like when we, show, when I show you it blasting, you'll see that it's got like fine, gra uh, fine powder that just clogs everything up. But it's sucking it out through there, down through the grey pipe, into there and into this bag. And then what I do is periodically, I'll undo the Jubilee clip and I'll empty the bag. And it keeps it all 
flowing out of the way. So these are where your hands go. You can see, you put your hands through, but they get very sticky and sweaty. So you get some gloves to put on on your hands it's to stop your hands getting sweaty um, when you work in the sandblaster. And here are some um, earmuffs. The reason being is when I switch the compressor on, it's really loud and the compressor will run up or run down depending on how fast I'm using the air. And so you need these on. So what do I use as the actual sandblast material? This here, I'll get some. There. I use garnet. Um, I found that it's probably the best I can get. Um, and it, it's, I get it from Machine Martin, I think um, 20 kilo buckets. And it kind of like looks like that. I'll move it into the sun. And it kind of like looks like that. Let's turn that off. Now you can see that, look, I've been blasting something and you can see the, the residue of whatever it was I was blasting and it's these type of things that clog up those nozzles that I was telling you about. So how do I fix it? Easy. I just get one of these, a sieve. And then I put the grit in, like so. And I go from one bucket to another and I get rid of it and it's as easy as that. Can you see them white bits in there? Yeah. And then I just chuck them away and then start again. So normally I have two buckets going, one clean, one dirty and I move it over and that makes sure that it gets rid of all the, the, the detritus that the blaster will blast off um, and, and make sure that the, it's as clean as I can get it to be. So you can see that I've made a little table here to put bits and bobs on. The door opens up, there's the cabinet. I've done extra lights, I've done the sound, the steel down the side so that the, the sand and the gravel just goes across that way. I've f sorted out the fan, the extractor fan comes onto there. But what about the noise? So, I'm going to turn the compressor on. Ready? Protect your ears because it's loud. I told you it was. So this time what I'll do, I'll just move that so you can see it there, there's the bolt and I won't turn the extractor fan on. So let's see what happens without the extractor fan. Can you see that it's beginning to get a bit clogged up now by all the very fine dust that's around. All this round here. So I'm going to turn the extractor fan on. Yeah. 
and very quickly it will suck all that extra dust that's causing the problem making it a lot more clearer but you can see that the lights that are put on here and here what a difference they're making to illuminating the work so again I'll just show you the differences so that's what you would be looking at and you can see it's a lot lot clearer just for the sake of hard wiring in some old IKEA bits and bobs and they seem to work great so um, I'll switch it off and I'll just finish blasting the um, bolt well funny enough um, whilst I was sandblasting um, a bulb blew in uh, my good old IKEA light so the bulb's gone um, so it's simplicity itself you just get another screw in bulb screw it in check it works I'm in the way check it works Ta -da! and everything's back to how it was so while I were there um, as I said I, I blasted the bolt and I'll take the bolt outside now so that you can see how clean it's come so I'll just turn the camera off for a moment so there we go there's the bolt really cool clean threads just as if it's brand new and I use the sandblaster as well for cleaning um, bolts and nuts as much as I do for anything else and that's it really um, just showing you how it works it's just a rough guide so you, again like I say you can see that you know got myself a, a little compressor I wired it in or I didn't I had an electrician do it because it has to be in the same sort of circuit that a, a cooker's on I got that um, pressure equalizer water trap from there upgraded the lights on the um, and then not only upgraded the lights also put that in so that the grit falls down inside because it all goes down as you can see in that chamfer so as you, as you blast it around it all falls down but one of the problems again is if you blast in small nuts and bolts they fall in there so oh, to get around that I got one of these a cake stand so I put the cake stand on and then they have to be really small to um, to fall through that you know like I said I will show you what I did and I have a little pair of pliers that I hold them on and rotate them round while I'm blasting them um, and then that's the extractor like I say it's a wood chip extractor again it's from uh, Machine Mart as you can see what it is uh, it's, it's designed to capture wood chips but it works perfectly in getting all the uh, the old uh, sand molecules out of the air and that's it so I hope you view, uh, you can see you know that, that's my tools that's my blasting cabinet uh, and I'm quite renowned really because I like to put everything in through it if I can because it comes out nice clean and tidy and it gives me a fighting chance to uh, to do things and it's all connected on those little air things that's all they are so I hope you uh, you can see how it works see how I do things grip buckets and the cleaner as I said um, and I hope that's been okay for you so thank you very much